Hello everyone, mabuhay! Have you reached Tubuka again here in Kuala Lumpur? But uh, as you can notice, the one in my background, no, we are not featuring that one for now. Uh, we already have that uh, once in our uh, blog, short blog before, but today we are doing something else. What I wanted to do is that we need to uh, go around the tunnel that uh, one of the highlights here in Kuala Lumpur uh, that has been built or uh, one of the infrastructure that has been built uh, about say about 10 years back and one of these is the, uh, the smart tunnel that uh, we are going through drive through in a short while so uh, while we're driving there I will tell you something about the history or what is the functions of that tunnel I mean it is actually uh, uh, two functions it was listed here in Malaysia to be uh, expressway, you know, so uh, let's find out and uh, let's go and drive through there. Okay, we are about to enter the storm water management and road tunnel or smart tunnel in short here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And as you can see, uh, this is the uh, entrance and going into the tunnel. And uh, we are actually uh, coming from the uh, entrance from Bukit Bintang or the uh, Jalan Sultan Ismail area and as you can see there's one car on my left in there that is the one of the entrance coming from the uh, Jalan Tun Razak uh, or from the KLCC area and uh, in fact uh, like I said uh, the main objective of this tunnel is to solve the problem of flash floods in Kuala Lumpur and also to reduce the traffic jams along the city, I mean, going out from the city during the last hours. So uh, there are two components of this uh, tunnel, the stormwater tunnel and the motorway tunnel. And as if you can see, we are actually at the uh, top level of the tunnel. And if you can notice that there's a, the um, curbish top of this while we are driving through is we are on the top of the tunnel we are actually have three levels in here there is one water level and the second one is the lower deck and actually to be exact we are on the upper deck of the tunnel so um, it's a little bit of history in, in here like I've mentioned is that this was constructed in uh, 2003 and it's completed in 2007 so uh, as you can see this is a fully equipped uh, tunnel there's a lot of features that is uh, been uh, installed into this tunnel if you can see those green colors in every if I'm not mistaken these are all every uh, 200 meters those are the passages or the escape shops that it going through the uh, outside the tunnel or the ground level. So uh, those are the, some of the features that I have in here. Uh, this is uh, listed as the world first dual function tunnel. It's a uh, storm management and uh, road like I've mentioned. Longest tunnel in Malaysia during that time. And again, this we have about 9.7 kilometers storm water bypass tunnel uh, four kilometers double deck water way within the storm tunnel and uh, like I said there is an ingress and egress connection to this uh, motorway tunnel linking to the southern gateway of the city so uh, in a short while we are actually going out from this tunnel towards the uh, Sungai Besi area. So, um, 
and we are uh, approaching it now so meaning we are driving now about uh, four kilometers with a speed of 60 kilometers per hour so here we go we are reaching on the light of the tunnel now so and this is it and if you can see uh, we have to split uh, exit which is going uh, I mean to divert the traffic uh, on both ways so it will be uh, the merging outside is I mean the dispersal of the traffic will be a little bit of uh, clear when we are reaching the uh, toll plazas so again this is a, a open toll uh, system here in Kuala Lumpur so I'm driving here now on the uh, smart tags so uh, yeah here yeah, so it's actually this is the end of this uh, I mean the, the the exit going out to the from the city okay we are now going back to the city center so if you can notice there's a lot of construction on the left that is where the Banda Malaysia development is situated and at the front of while we are entering the toll plazas as you can see the TRX which is still under construction so uh, like I mentioned earlier we have actually three levels of this tunnel while we entering one is the water tunnel the lower carriageway and the upper carriageway so what we are entering now is on the lower carriageway uh, whereby if you can see the flat roof of the tunnel uh, like on the opposite side just now it's a concave which is obviously on the top of this uh, uh, structure so while we are driving through again we are on the speed of 60 kilometers per hour and now I wanted to mention about the function of this uh, tunnel uh, they are have actually three modes which is the first mode is we call it the under normal condition where there is no storm so no flood water will be diverted into the system and when the second mode is activated uh, flood water is diverted into the bypass tunnel underneath the motorway tunnel and then the motorway section is still open to traffic at that stage and when the third mode is in operation the motorway will be closed to tra all traffic and uh, after making sure that all the vehicles have exited the motorway automated watertight gates will be open to allow the flood water to pass through and after the flood has ended the tunnel is verified and cleaned via a pressurized wash washing and the motorway will be reopened within two to three days so you can imagine that with where we are driving now is full of water when there is a flash flood on the uh, city center so uh, yeah this is a very uh, and a very unique uh, infrastructure that has been built here in Kuala Lumpur and the this tunnel have a lot of features or what I should say is a unique features uh, in fact uh, uh, it, we actually have a radio or rebroadcasting services inside this as one of the uh, features uh, automated flood control gate like I said just now uh, cross passages and uh, other emergency uh, equipments are actually installed inside the tunnel so um, yeah this is a mega project that has been built uh, one has been listed uh, one in the world so uh, like I said now that we are driving through uh, we are actually about to exit the tunnel uh, from the old airport area I mean the Bandar Malaysia and we are exiting at the same place that we came in just now uh, which is going towards Bukit Bintang we are turning to the left the one that's going uh, straight is going through the Jalan Tunrazak area which is you can be leading through to KLCC and going up north to the city center so uh, as you can see uh, 
like I said, there's a lot of features that they have been uh, mentioned earlier on and we are about to turn to the left now and we are actually in a short while we are uh, actually looking at the light at the end of the tunnel so as you can see at the front there still have a lot of constructions maybe uh, on the right hand side we have the trx that still been uh, ongoing constructions and we are heading out now and if you can see there is the uh, TM tower that we have been featured on one of our videos lately so uh, here you go we are exiting to Bukit Bintang area the Tundrasak exchange and if you can see on the left over there is the KL118 that is still being uh, under construction so uh, there you go Okay, my Tubuka friend, this is all again for this vid with our quick uh, drive through into the smart tunnel. And I would like to wrap up. Yes, there are two major functions of this tunnel uh, as a dispersal for both the flood water from the city center during um, flash floods, which I recently uh, last month uh, again. And uh, the other one is a dispersal of traffic during the peak hours if it is really really bad uh, traffic inside the city center but having said that it has always been be blamed and you know what it's always been a scapegoat of some people to some people that uh, uh, the smart town is not smart enough because uh, if there's some flood or flash flood inside the city center it's always been uh, you know they still cannot disperse that quick and uh, the water is still been uh, until the knee level or things like that and the city center so uh, yeah that's always been a highlight uh, but uh, like I said uh, I probably in my opinion as a civil engineer uh, it is still very hard for them to contain that water I mean to, to disperse that water quickly because there is still a lot there are still a lot of constructions in the city center uh, and uh, it's all over the place so uh, uh, somehow the uh, city council is still imposing a lot of uh, uh, mitigation measures or implementing to the consultants or the contractor out there but like I said uh, it's still very very hard for them to uh, you know to totally uh, you know uh, get out on that uh, flood in the city although it's been a long time uh, that it, it won't happen because you know uh, probably um, they did a lot of measures on the contractor that been imposed but again it's still not that enough and but hopefully from uh, in five years time maybe they will probably and definitely they will uh, solve the issue once and for all and uh, what they are aiming for Kuala Lumpur is will be one of the great city uh, in the world or probably in Asia later okay before we end this vid uh, for all our friends that new into my channel please don't forget to subscribe like the videos feel free to share them and uh, don't forget to uh, to ring that uh, small uh, bell button so you will not be missing uh, the upcoming videos that I'll be uploading later and uh, yeah thank you again for watching stay safe everybody and Bye-bye for now.